What's up, I'm Kyle, and this is episode four of the Vervet Forest vlog. On this episode, I'm gonna be talking about all of the bushfires that we've been fighting here at the Vervet Monkey Foundation. Also give you an update on Sybil, the blind monkey, who's moved over to meet the other blind monkeys. Tesha, the uh, little girl who we got from the game reserve, has now moved over to Sick Bay Troop to be introduced to the moms. And then the boy who was shot by the pellet gun, who was paralyzed in his back legs, is finally starting to regain some movement in his legs, so I'll give you an update on him. Quick shout out to Chuck and Di, Mac, and Marcia Merlot for helping me to continue making these videos by your support on Patreon. Thank you very much. Big day for Sybil. She gets to go to meet the blind monkeys in the enclosure next to him. Isn't that exciting? What do you have to say about it, Tori? We ran into the wall. Okay. Nah. She's gonna eat you. Best option is gonna be put the crush cage on its side so she just has to walk out instead of climbing out. Yep. Because she can't see nothing. Watch out, Sybil. Maybe. Okay. There's a thing called chewing, but you just do that too. Can we get her a puppy? Like a little seeing idol? She really could. I know, I know. Here we go. Yeah. Thank you so much. There we go. Oop, okay, you're faster than I am. Success. Sybil is in her new enclosure. Soon she gets to meet the troop and the other monkeys that are blind. And eventually they'll get to meet each other. But for now, she has to figure out where the hell she could be. Alarm calling aggressively at nothing right now. There's bandits on the roof. She doesn't really know where they are, or what to do about it. Monkey, you need to go. Wow. She really doesn't like people on her roof. Oh shit. Oh shit, in the troop, she's in the troop. She's in the troop. In it then. She's in the troop. Oh shit. This is not the ideal situation. Hopefully everyone leaves her alone, keeps her distance. Yeah, she's right here. She's sitting under the tree there. She's perfectly healthy, but she's blind, so you should be able to creep up on her. Yeah. Tori, you want to walk this?
Oh, mana sih ngapain? Ih, Hold it, hold it. Good job, team. Not expected. There was a bandit on the roof and she freaked out, started alarm calling like crazy, was hanging upside down off the roof and walking. She got to the shade netting and it was a combination of her trying to hold onto the shade netting and falling forward and the connector coming loose and she just, just toppled. She didn't mean to, but she just, that's the way her body weight fell. She'd been in there, what, half an hour? Yeah. Not, not she was moving around just yeah. fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I mean, she did super well to get from the middle to the corner on the roof without falling off. Shame. So once the shade netting's fine, she, she was like monkey back. She, go back. And she just yeah. wanted to hold on it's, to something. It's very difficult, you know. I mean, she'll she'll adjust very well once she gets to know it. It's just very scary. I mean, yeah, until monkey until that happened, she was moving around really well. She'd already found the water, had a yeah. good drink, all of that. Just was one of those freaks. She pulled on the exact wrong spot. Same, Sybil. We'll get you back soon. Hmm? She yeah. bites you. See. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's exciting. You have fun. <laughs> good job, man. Good job. <laughs> well, that was exciting. <laughs> Unexpected. Hey, Tesha. How do you feel about that whole situation? Fixing up the shade netting now. Make sure that that doesn't happen again. The real question is, how many people does it take yeah. to fix the shade netting? <laughs> hmm. I think maybe the... So as you can see, there's a fire going on right now. Just burning along the brake right now, trying to stop it from going any further. But, uh, yeah. Everybody's up here, neighbors, all the volunteers. Everybody's got water. This is seriously the best that we can do to try and put this fire out because there's no fire engines, there's no fire team, there's nothing. It's just locals banding together to make this work. Run, 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 run. So I guess it came up from the other side of the mountain. Um, there's like three homes down on the other side that have already been protected from the burn. Basically now spreading it. Just basically trying to create more of a fire break since there's no road here. Yeah. Um, just trying to burn it off yeah. so that it doesn't come this way. Yes, yeah. And then also doesn't go back down the hill. Just trying to keep it controlled yeah. where we want it to go so that it doesn't burn off too much. But you can see it's burnt all the way down there. Yeah. And there's another fire out there too. Yes, I see. And then it's what, maybe a week ago, two weeks ago, we had a fire on this mountain here coming over. Yeah. It's fire season. It's crazy right now. But this is what we have to fight the fires with. Rubber fucking mats to smack it down. And then these sprayers, which we usually use for disinfecting the enclosures. See, Fenwell is pumping it up right now. But I mean, this is, this is seriously what we have to fight this with. They've got a tanker over there that's got some hoses on it. But there's really not much that can be done why you need so many people and just dragging up jugs of water all the volunteers are filling up water into jugs and 
you know, everything they can basically carry, any water, just filling it up, bringing it up, making sure that there's enough water here to deal with this fire. We just waste our time. Look now. I know. It's going to come back. Come, come back. Come but the wind is going this way. Yeah. So that's good. Maybe it will stay going that way and push the fire away. At least this is burnt already. Yeah, but so. the problem with get that side because this, that gas they they have the cow, so oh. it's burnt. That'd be bad. And it's also straight down over there. And us now we scared that side. Yeah. This side now is fine. Yeah. It's scared them. You have to walk around because it can come up over the top. Yeah. Oh, man. So the cow farmer isn't home. He has a fence that's a uh, barbed wire <laughs> and we can't get over there. Great. Yeah. And the tree's on fire. <laughs> Perfect. On fire. Yeah. What up, Kisi? How you doing, man? Yes, that's a GoPro. Okay, you're gonna groom groom the GoPro? Or you could eat it, I guess. That's one way. Hello, Rocio. Yeah, buddy. KC put a lot of spit on this lens. It's a hot day. Everybody's in the shade trying to stay out of this ridiculous sun that's making me squint like crazy. But heading down to see Sybil over at the Blind Monkeys in her new enclosure. She was moved back there this morning. There's Hannah monitoring Sybil. Hi, little lady. She's a little more calm than she did yesterday. But still, you look confused. It's gonna take a while before she's uh, totally comfortable. It's always tough as an integration anyway. I mean, just being a monkey going into a new enclosure and being next to a new troop. You have to get used to the hierarchy and who everyone is, but being blind being next to an enclosure of blind monkeys and then next to a troop of non-blind monkeys is tough. Out here for like three hours, all of this fucking mountain. Ice fire all over the place. Seems like the VMF is contained for now, but the uh, we're on the neighbor's farm, like two farms away. <laughs> Georgie boy. So last night was one of those nights that you'll never forget. Woke up, my phone ringing, Dave was calling at around 2.30 in the morning, which 
is never a good sign. You never want anyone to call you that late, especially not in a place like this. It just doesn't happen. Dave says, wake up. There's fire. You got to get everybody up and outside. I look out my bedroom window and the sky is just orange in all directions, all around us, just on fire. Tori and Megan and I go to scope out where the fires are and it's everywhere. Burning on the neighbor's property just to our left, burning up by Rafiki Rock, which is like the top of the mountain at the top of our property, burning over by Camelot, which is where we were fighting it during the day the other day, just everywhere is on fire. And everyone was asleep. So everyone gets up, all the volunteers go to action, grabbing the water buckets, filling everything up. We grab our, um, our pesticide backpacks that we have that have the sprayers on them, grab those, strap those on, we end up going up here and fighting these fires for like the next three hours. Just, I mean, you can see around me right now. It's insane. And navigating this in the night, just a headlamp, the flames. Most people didn't even have lamps or lights of any sort. Cell phone lights were the best a lot had. It was nuts. I mean, it was to the point where it was so bad and so gnarly that, you know, I wasn't even going to film. I didn't film anything until way later in the night once we were more calmed down. But we ended up going over two farms, crossing over this whole mountain, all the way down to the other side of the mountain. I mean, you can see out in the distance this green farmland. We were down like right at the boundary line for that. It was just everywhere. And listen, this is what I'm talking about. We're out here, no face masks, no respirators, nothing to be set up to actually be able to handle like the flames. The best we have is just what we have on us and those little jet packs we call them because they look like jet packs. And uh, yeah, just out here. Hello, Giorgio. Come here, man. Yeah. This has to be hot on your little paws, huh? No? Huh? <laughs> I mean, look at this. Look how thick this lantana is. And the lantana is like spiky thorns all over it. So no matter where you go, you're just pushing through bush. And then everything's on fire around you. So we went all the way down this mountain. I mean, you can see, I think, out in the distance here where the green is and then the fire stopped. And we were all the way down here, all the way off to the left. There's another mountain over here coming around the whole side of this one, two farms over. Ended up on some dude's property where the flames were just like right at his fence after we had met up with another guy who had come to help to protect the, our direct neighbor's farm. And we thought we were at our neighbor's farm, but it turned out we were like two or three farms over. And then this guy had this house that had an electric fence and barbed wire and stuff, so we couldn't get inside. So we started shouting for him. And then he, was, he came outside and was all skeptical, nervous, like who we were. Saw the fire, let us in, got to refill our packs and everything from his pool, and then put out the fire that was all around his property. But ended up getting back. Everything was contained and good at like... Mm, around 5.30 in the morning, something like that. Still dark, sun was just starting to pop over the horizon. Took a shower, crawled back into bed, laid there for a while, fell asleep for like two minutes, and then get a text from Megan. Fire kicking up just behind her and my place, which are pretty close to each other, right on the neighbor's property run up to the cottage, grab those packs again, head right back over to the neighbors, put that out, chase the fire down for another 30 minutes or so, putting it out, got to another fence that we couldn't really pass at all, but the fire wasn't gonna head back our direction and it was in an area that wasn't gonna like burn up too much because all sides of it had already burned out, so it's gonna be okay to leave it be, but yeah. 
you know, it was so dark. Everyone was so turned around and stuff. Like we had to fill up at that guy's pool because we didn't even know where we were to fill up water. We couldn't get people down to us because we didn't know how to guide them to us because we had made so many turns and just like gone all over the place. But our monkeys are all right. Everyone's okay. It's like three fires in three days. Hasn't been this bad in years, Josie says. But, uh, yeah. How about we go see some monkeys and get some good news? That sounds like a plan. So this is who we're referring to as Pellet Pete, which is the guy that uh, was paralyzed in his legs. Turns out, see that? Movement. Turns out he actually had one fracture on the left side of his pelvis and he had another fracture on the right side of his pelvis. And that was the reason that his legs have been so screwed up. But he's been getting that acupuncture. He went to the vet, he got an x-ray. Look at that, it's flying around in here now. Moving, doing much better. And the best part, the best part about Pellet Pete is that we know where his troop is and it's still a window of availability for him to go back to his troop. So once he heals up, we'll probably get him back out there into the wild, which will be a huge success. I'm gonna stop bothering him, but very exciting to see him moving around like that. And Tesha, our little lady, has actually moved over to the sick bay intro enclosure because all these vasectomies have been going on and monkeys have been getting done and moved around. And so she's over here meeting the moms. So we're gonna go take a look, see how it's going. Mm-hmm. How's she doing? She's doing really good. She really wants to go out already. If I don't look, she'll just run through the door. That's um, good. Is she interacting with anyone? Yeah, and she's besties with Dumbo already. Um, and all the other juveniles are always great with her. Um, and she had some groomings with Missy and with Appy, so pretty much everyone. Isla still hasn't she didn't come in yet, but we'll get there. So there she is. That's pretty much everything that's been going on for the past week or so. Um, lots of successes all around from fires to monkeys. Things are looking up for a lot and uh, vasectomies are going really well. Uh, if you want to buy some merch and stuff, to help support us and wrap the vervet forest head on over to our teespring if you want to become a patron and help support me personally to continue making these videos you can head over to our patreon account and if you'd like to donate the best way is to use the link that is at the bottom of the screen right now and there's a couple of those links in the next card but thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time